Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Chloe vs. The World. And I'm actually in the studio. I've probably not, how long have I not been here? Uh, since December the 18th. Oh my God, I've literally been traveling. I've been traveling. So this is like a new year, new me episode. Oh, maybe we should address the resolutions as well. Oh yeah, how are you getting on? What were they? <laughs> <laughs> Less swearing, not, it's not gone well. Apparently people who swear are cleverer. Cle I heard that. Cleverer is not a word, is it? <laughs> no. I've heard that and I'm left-handed, so. Doesn't that mean you're creative? More likely to be rich. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so left-handed and I swear, smart and rich. What else do I need in this life? Um. So that's good. So swearing, try more. Well, I've literally just been traveling around, you know, Bali and Australia. I say traveling like I wasn't backpacking because we've got too much shit to get in a backpack. Basically, I actually bought the biggest effing suitcase you'd ever seen and it was still overweight. We had to buy a new one on the way home. So that was good. Tiny things, less partying. No comment. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. That was, well, I've told you all once, I'll tell you again. I'm a compulsive liar by trade and an athlete. But yeah, we went to Bali and I chilled it down. And well, twice, went to Australia and chilled it down. Oh my God, did you say, I'd bloody tell you something. <laughs> I will tell you. For those of you who listened to the last episode, which should be all of you, because what the fuck, I know you're all loyal and loving and luxurious i couldn't think of another now um but dj hitty hit i don't think his name's dj hitty i think it's just hitty but he saw the clip and dimmed me and i'm gonna go to his event on the 31st of march so i can actually see him we should take the pod no i'll take a gopro i won't take the pod anyways less partying no i'm literally 30 next year so i've got until next year to stop then i will retire me and Millie were actually talking the other day. Well, we've had this conversation quite a few times. And um, we kind of, you know, sometimes are a bit, re is it retrospective where you kind of like look at yourself? Yep. We're being retrospective. <laughs> <And> <laughs> we were doing some retrospecting. And we were like, do you think we'll still be partying, you know, in 10 years? And I said no. And then Millie basically told me that I'm full of shit and we literally will be. Like, if I have a kid, that's really scary saying that. I'm fucking 30 next year, so scary. But like, if I have kids, I'll get a babysitter and go raving. Should should I be saying that online? <laughs> um, I think it's okay until yeah, like, someone, I, like, drags this up. Yeah, like when, I, when I say raving, I mean, like, you know, my mum does a, a girls' night on a Wednesday and they all cook dinner for each other. I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, shelling it down. Okay. So, did I have any other resolutions or was that it? Oh, I literally forgot them. <laughs> uh, was not lying one of them? Not lying was one of them. <laughs> Good. I am a compulsive, it's like a mental illness. Someone on Snapchat were like, I lie all the time. But I, it's not like I lie and don't tell anyone I lie and then tell everyone I lied. And I think it's because that's funny, admitting to lying is funny. Um, but even the other day, Millie, Millie asked me how long I'd been doing something. And I was like, oh, 10 minutes. No, lie. I said, oh, half an hour. I'd literally done it for five minutes. And then I walked off thinking, why, why have I just done that lie? And then I had to go back and be like, oh, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I didn't fucking think that you did that. <laughs> so that's fine. So yeah, new year, new me, resolution's going really well. In fact, let's just bin them. And also I was going to do dry down. I'll tell you what I am doing though. I'll tell you what I am doing. I'm going to run a half marathon this year. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And that's the end of the pot. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm going to run a half marathon. I used to run loads before Love Island because obviously I didn't want a fupa in the villa. For those of you that don't know what a fupa is, is a fat upper pussy area. So what I would do is, no one told me to do this. I would, it's just, you know, I thought I want to be ripped to go on Love Island. Because who doesn't fancy a girl with a big raging six pack? Anyways, um, I would go to the gym and then I would run a 5K. So 
I don't do that at the moment. Don't look at my food pre vlogs. I've fucking got one. Um, but I would like to run a half marathon for Mind Charity because I hold a very special place in my heart. So that's what I'm doing this year. So that's the resolution is to run a half marathon. Continue swearing, continue lying, continue partying. And I don't care if it ruins my market because... I literally couldn't be more single if I tried. I said on a pod before Christmas I was in love and that, you know, aged really well. <laughs> but I don't laugh, I'll cry. Anyway, <laughs> we, we're getting to the first bit. For those of you, like, we've obviously rebranded the pod. Attention! I know you're here to watch a episode of Clovis as well, but before you do that, I've got a big, fat emergency, Okay. I need you all to go on youtube.com and go and type in Chloe versus the word and click subscribe. Because I want 100k followers, okay? My producer is literally saying if I don't get 100k, she's gonna do me dirty <laughs> with the edits and keep giving me a double chin in my YouTube thumbnails. So I don't want that anymore, yeah? Please, please, please click subscribe. When you do, there's loads of exciting shit coming. But until then, it's like basically I've got this whole grey cloud over my head until we do that. So can we all just, you know, subscribe? And I'm going to be talking about it on my Instagram and Snapchat until we get it. So don't mute me. No, don't mute me. I love the views. Right, anyways, we'll get into the first section. Um, Chloe versus the headlines. What's been going on in the world? What's been happening? Basically... For those of you who don't know, I was in Australia and um, I made my return to Twitter. I feel like Twitter's, you know, risky place to be on social media if you don't have thick skin or don't realise that they're behind a football picture having a go at you. But what I thought I would do is post really fit bikini pictures on Twitter. <laughs> um, because why not? In, you don't have to just post your pics on Instagram. You can put them on Snapchat. You can put them on TikTok. You can put them on Twitter. And Twitter, do you know what? Yeah, what I will say: if you post a fit pic on Twitter, the compliments are the best ones. Like you'll feel so good. The abuse is the worst abuse you'll get. But you know, mute some words. But what I saw, there was a quite a few things in like the threads. So yeah, my pictures caused a thread. <laughs> Oh my God, if you literally played me that back like three years ago, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You fucking widow, put some clothes on. But loads of people were like, loads of people, I sound so arrogant. I'm well, Basically, I'm gassed because people like my pictures, okay? <laughs> You're allowed to fucking be pleased that people like your pictures, especially when you put a little bikini on, you know, been on holiday for a few weeks and, you know, feel good enough to post a bikini picture. Why am I just finding myself fucking, you all met me in a bikini. So fuck off. <laughs> why I'm getting defensive it's only me talking here um, anyways in the comments <laughs> oh my manager watches this but I don't even know if you'll you'll see the light of day of this podcast <laughs> anyways I noticed a couple things that I want to talk about and address Number one, right, people were, like, barking at my picture. Like, <laughs> they were all going woof, woof, or, like, sending videos of dogs. <laughs> like, barking. What does that mean? Is it good? Because I feel like if a dog likes something, it doesn't bark it. It runs up to it and, like, licks it. No one was sending me licking videos. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> There were just loads of videos of dogs, like, you know, really barking, like, woof, woof, woof. <laughs> Has anyone seen this, that vine where it's the man and the, like, dog attacks him and he, and he's like, and I was like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm kind of hoping, bit of fluff in my face, because I haven't been here in so long, it's a bit dusty. I'm hoping that the barking is, you know, a nice thing. But like, where has that come from? Actually, should we work? Should we check what is bark? I can where, Google it. How I would we? I, I actually asked um... Jeeves. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> I asked someone in the office what it meant, and it was like supposed to be like a dog gets excited, so it barks. <laughs> 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 Ew. 
Ew, no, keep doing it. It really gives me a bigger ego because I fucking need that. <laughs> joke, joke. Oh, is that what it is? Like a woo, woo, woo. Oh, because like, you know, when you when you come home and you've got a dog and your dog's like, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, like okay. you're the postman to the men. Ah, uh, okay. Well, thank you for the box. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate it. And for that, when I go on holiday in three weeks, I'll take some more fucking bikini pictures. The next comment I realized was people were saying, no, it's not been on my bikini pictures. It's just been on my Twitter in general. Is people keep saying I'm standing on business. And I even tweeted like, what the fuck does that mean? Standing on business. I don't have a business. Um, and people were saying, oh, you, you said what you said. But like, I don't know. Uh, More specifically, when talking about Love Island, they've said I'm standing on business. So, Put simply, to stand on business means to take care of your responsibilities or put your money where your mouth is. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about me is I'm going to stand on my business. <laughs> I literally, I mean, it feels like a positive comment. So thank you again. We're just doing a round of thanks for Twitter at the moment. <laughs> and then the last one was um, people calling me milk, saying she's good milk. And like pictures of people drinking milk. I have no idea what that means. So if anyone can please like comment, obviously after you've subscribed, because you're fucking doing that. Um, can someone tell me what it means if I'm, someone said I'm elite milk. Do you want to know what Urban Dictionary said? Yeah, what does Urban Dictionary say? Exceptionally good-looking white woman. <laughs> um, right. Can we not just, you know, say I'm, you know, pretty? <laughs> I don't know why I say stuff like this, because I look in my mirror and I'm like, yeah, not the one. But anyways, that Twitter thread, well, there's a few, only because I was attention-seeking in Australia that I posted those pictures. <laughs> Yeah, I'll admit it. I'm an attention seeker. Anyway, so that was the Twitter thread. Leading on, I'm going to segue here from Twitter to the next thing. Is the... Uh, about to tell a lie. And I stopped myself. I keep seeing everywhere on Twitter and other social media is the traitors. And it's... I've, I actually saw this tweet the other day. It said it's had like over 6 million people watching it. And they... No oh, wake up because I've literally had half a bottle of tequila rose. I feel like when I'm tipsy, I do a good podcast. <laughs> Right, the traitors. I've had. I've tried to watch it. What I will say is, all last week, I, um, someone told me. So I was obviously away for three and a half weeks. So for every day that you're away, no, what the fuck am I talking about? For every hour of time difference is a day where you'll feel fucked when you're back. So as I've gone Bali in Australia. Australia was like eleven hours, I think. So. You know, my brain was mush last week. I literally didn't know what was going on. What I didn't know is I was playing Fortnite. Anyways, um, so I've not caught up on the trailers and I've tried to watch it. My brain is mush. I put it on. I was actually watching it this morning. I was really getting into it. But do you, do you want to know something? Harry, I want to give you a secret. Well, this is my theory. It's not a secret. I think when you watch a program and it's like a competition and it's pre-recorded, obviously not live. There's a few, you know, intricacies to this. But the more airtime they get, likely to be the winner. That Harry was getting all the airtime. Clearly, he was going to win. Him or Jazz. I kind of wanted Jazz to win. Although, I don't know why, because I've not got that far. But, like, Twitter is screaming him. I've seen a few TikToks, and I think he's slay. But, talking about Harry, do you know George Braggs? Also, did you need to win all that money when you're flying around on private jets? Joking, I saw a clip where he was like, I'm just lucky to know who I know and people could absolutely say that about me because I'm very lucky with some of my friends. Um, but, yeah. Also, that poor girl, what was her name? Was it Molly? Yeah, it's Molly. Molly, who didn't want to dog him out because she fancied him. Number one, for never dog yourself out of money for boys. Even I wouldn't do that. Except I have. I wouldn't do it again. Number two, um, I would do that. <laughs> Number two, if I fancy someone, take the money and just fucking give me a tenner or a holiday. So there was that. Apparently he has said he's going to give us some of the money. Yeah, but we can all say things. Mm. Do you know what I mean? 
question. Well, and also, how much? Mm. I would like 10 bags. You just won. Send me 10 bags. You know, like in Love Island, they used to do the like split. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think anybody ever would have stolen it? If I'd have won, I'd have fucking stolen it. You lot <laughs> fumbled the bag on that one. I was fucking there for the cash money. I wasn't, but I like, I, I'll tell you, when we were in the final and we were stood there, I was thinking, because I'm an attention seeker, I was thinking, if I steal the money, that would be so funny. I always didn't win, and, and I was like in love at the time or whatever, but <laughs> in hindsight, if I'd have won, I'd have fucking cleaned up. 50 bags, I'd have been on a private jet for a day and then I'd probably have none left. So <laughs> there's that. The next thing, people may be called for, what the fuck? People may be called for conscri conscription to the army. Is that why there's loads of TikToks going around like day in the life of... So oh. Who are we going to war with? Should I know this? Sorry, in Australia. <laughs> I, well, I think that's a big part of speculation is why people are being conscripted for war. Like, what's going on? What's going on here? What do you mean? People are actually getting called up for war? Well, it's just been a bit of a threat by uh, old Rishi Sunak. And he's just banned vapes. This man is on a mission to terrify the nation. Okay. I don't know. Like, war's like, I'm, I'm feeling a bit scared. Oh, my God. I've literally got my head in the sand with this one. That's fucking shit. How do you think you'd fare at war? Me and war? Um, well, I'm an athlete by trade, so I'm all right. <laughs> and also I shell it down on Fortnite, so if someone gives me a purple sniper, bow. I don't know why I'm plugging that. Ask me how far I've run this year. <laughs> how far have you run this year? I haven't. <laughs> I'm going to do a 5K tomorrow. I used to be able to do a 5K in 22 minutes. Yeah. So if you go on my Instagram and check out my... Or go on my Twitter and check out my bikini pictures, you'll see that I've actually got dench legs. I think that's from when I used to play football and it's muscle memory. But I can fucking go some. Like, I tell everyone in a sprint, I'd win. I would win. Um, yeah. Not much to say about the army thing because I don't know. But if we're going to war, then maybe we shouldn't be talking about it on this podcast. <laughs> Like, this is the wrong place for that. <laughs> Picks up glass of tequila rose. <laughs> Moving on in this week's. <laughs> right. Has Omar tried to contact Millie since Australia? For those of you who don't know, Omar is the suit wearing tour guide, photographer, driver, photographer, photographer. Can't think of anything else he did. Um, to the stars. He... I don't know if he's tried to contact Millie in Australia, but basically after we spent, we spent 800, we didn't realize how much this tour was going to cost, right? And I kind of checked. So to go, I've got hiccups. To drive from Sydney, we were staying in the city in Sofitel, which I know some of you have asked me, to drive there to the Blue Mountains, two hour drive, and then you either get a tour guide or your driver waits for you. And then you drive back. Like it's quite a long day. Like it must be... Oh, it's quite a fucking long day. It's about eight hours. Um, and then he took us to the zoo after. Um, but he charged us £1,600. Yeah. I literally, like, when I was doing the maths on my little calculator trace, I looked at Millie like, we need to get back to the city. We were on the way home anyways. And I was like, the more time we spend this man, the more fucking money we've got to spend. So £1,600 for the day. So it's £800 each. Um, so if any of you are looking to book Omar, take out a bank loan. <laughs> so to, for him to pick me up from the airport and take me to the hotel, it's about 20 minutes. Like, everyone, it's so weird. Everywhere in Australia is 20 minute drive. Bar Blue Mountains, obviously. But like, you know, airport to city, 20 minutes. City to Bondi, 20 minutes. Bondi to Bondi Junction, 20 minutes. Bondi Junction to city is all, I don't know, some sort of weird maths going on there or like maybe different speed limits get you there always in 20 minutes. Anyways, yeah. How then I tried to contact Millie? Well, after the whole tour guide thing, you know, he obviously thought these girls want to splash the cash and spend more time with me. No, we don't, Omar. Thank you. We do not want to spend any more money. Um, but he would, like, keep messaging Millie, like, hi, hi, and then calling her. Um, so, yeah. I wonder if he knows that loads of people know who he was. I tell you what, though. I don't know if I'm... Well, he didn't tell me. I can't tell anyone. He basically, before he moved to Australia, he was in... 
I think it's called like official protocol for the country of Jordan, which is kind of near Dubai. And he'd met Angelina Jolie and fucking showed his loads of pictures of Angelina Jolie. And Angelina Jolie gave him a designer bag. Like, who is this man? Um, so imagine if he's like, you know, gone into hiding since the Angelina time. Anyways, that's Omar. No, he's not trying to contact me. He's in Australia. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is my absolute favorite thing to watch on YouTube by my own podcast is Paul Mascow was on Chicken Shop Day. Okay, he is fit, but I've seen the room. No, he's fucking fit, actually. I didn't know why I said, but he's fucking fit. He's fit. <laughs> Have you seen the thing? It's like clips of him running through central London. It's like... The no, room get room up. Get up now. This girl runs away from dates. <laughs> Apparently the rumour is that... And some girl on TikTok started it. The rumour is that he um, goes on dates and then when he's not enjoying it, he just starts running away. I didn't run away from Amelia, but... You wouldn't, would you? Love her. I'm really a big fan. Would you do Chicken Shop Day? I would love to. It's my dream. I've asked her every time I see her in person. I always ask her to go on, but I'm literally not cool enough. <laughs> I think you're cool. Start a petition in the comments. One day we will get on that. Bro, when I fucking go on Chicken Shop Day, I'm retiring. That's <laughs> peak. That is peak, peak, peak like celebdom, you know? I've watched it since day dot. Okay. So, big fan. Anyways. Those are the headlines from your trusty news reporter. <laughs> right, the next thing that we're going to talk about, yeah, is Bali. And like, I don't know if you follow me on like any other social media, but you might have seen how turbulent my whole effing time was from the morning I woke up for my flight to Bali to the time I landed in Sydney. So I'm just going to, I'm going to tell the whole effing story from start to finish. Put this on 1.5 speed if you wish. But, right. 28th of December, I wake up. Right? And I'm getting, going to, oh no, Christmas Day, I fall down the stairs because I was obviously steaming. And if you saw, Christmas was a big fat bender for me. Um, as it always is. I don't know if you met my mother. Hello, Louisa. Um, but I fell down the stairs and broke off my toenail. And I was like, I'm literally going to Bali. I'm clearly going to have toes out at some point. I need to fix my toenail. So I go home on 27th. But I get there quite late. It's traffic is hell. 28th morning, I wake up and I'm like, shit, I need a fucking nail appointment. I'm not going to Bali with no toenail. Like, that is so clapped. So I'm messaging, messaging, trying to get a nail appointment. As I'm trying to do that, my friend calls me who's in Bali. Airbnb is cancelled. Literally landing tomorrow. Airbnb is cancelled. New Year's Eve, Bali. One of the most popular places ever. Literally cancelled. Um, so that happened. So then I was like, fuck, what are we supposed to do? And have we got our money back? Because we've put a lot of cash down. She was like, leave it with me. I'm going to get a refund. I was like, right, I'm going to go get a toenail. And by the time I get back, I need to know what's going on. Gone to get a toenail. Whilst I'm getting my toenail done, I'm going on Airbnb, booking.com. And there are no, there's nowhere. We were basically going to Uluwatu because we went to Savaya on New Year's Eve. And we used to be in Uluwatu. So I was like, there's fucking nowhere anywhere near. What are we supposed to do? She's messaging me like, can't find anywhere, can't find anywhere. Also, my Thai sim, because she'd, no, her Australian sim, she's been in Australia, is not effing working in Bali. Like, my phones are working. I was like, right, I have got signal. Let me try to find somewhere. So I went on Airbnb and I find one that's like literally triple the price where I would like to pay. Um, but I was like, look, I'm literally leaving in an hour. We need someone to stay. So book that. Fine. Then I'm... I'm so nervous about flying on my own. Like, I'm not an independent woman. I do need a man or a supervisor at some point. So I got, got in the cab. My cab's arrived. And I was thinking, should I book it three hours? Should I get there three hours before? Whatever. And my cab's turned up late. Get in the car. The traffic is hell. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to miss my flight. Anyways, turned up. Run to check in with Emirates. I've never in my life seen an airport so busy. What on earth? Like, I flew that day last year to go to Dubai. And um, it wasn't that busy. Anyways, I'm there. It's heaving. I'm thinking, I'm really scared. I'm thinking, is my case overweight? Like, have I got anything I shouldn't in my hand luggage? Like, is there a bottle of water lurking around? Like, one thing about me is I'm going to accidentally leave a bottle of water for security. Get to the desk. Okay. I'm like, oh, hey, here's my suitcase. And it is, this suitcase is genuinely as big as me, if not bigger. I put my suitcase on the thing. And I was allowed 40 kg. I didn't read it. You're only allowed 32 kg in one case, so you can take two cases. I lift it on there, 33 kg. She goes, uh, you're overweight. I was like, well, what do you mean? I can have 40 kg. 
and it's so loud, so busy. Like I'm so overstimulated. I'm trying to listen to what she's saying, but I'm I'm scared at this point. I'm so nervous. She's like, "Yeah, okay, so overweight." I was like, "Right," and she was like, "Take some sandals out of it." I was like, "How do you know I've got sandals in there? And how do you know how much they weigh?" Anyways, pull it off the thing. In back as well, like 30, 33 kg is fucking heavy. Pull it off the thing. And then I've undone it. So now I'm embarrassed, okay? I'm embarrassed because my fucking suitcase is open for my clothes. I don't know what I've left on top. Knickers. Tampons. Oh, that's another fucking story. I open up the case, take the shoes out, go to, un to zip it back up. Oh, I'm hot and flustered at this point. I'm thinking, where's my passport? Where's my passport? And then I fell over the bag and fell on the floor in front of the whole queue. So I'm just laid on the floor thinking, please, ground swallow me up. Can everyone see my knickers? Whatever. Moved some sliders out, put it in my thing. And she's like, yeah, you're fine. I don't know why she made me do that. Like, what on earth? Like, how did she know my sliders? Where them Get out. Anyways, then I lift the bag. She didn't tell me to, to be fair. I just assumed that that's what you do in airport is put your bag on the suitcase belt. Put it on the suitcase belt. And she goes, nah, don't put it on the belt. It's broken. And I was like, well, what do you want me to do in my big fat fucking suitcase? I need to get to Bali. She was like, yeah, I'm just going to put this, you know, the little piece of paper that, you know what's it called ticket what label whatever scanner thing so i'm just gonna put this on it and then can you just put it over there and i look heathrow terminal whatever the fuck is heaving and there's just a fucking huge pile of suitcases in the middle of the terminal i was like put my suitcase over there she's like yeah smiling at me i was like oh that's not coming to bali is it but at this point like i'm so my whole day has been shit I was like, fuck it, put the case there. If it gets there, it gets there. If it doesn't, I've got one bikini in my hand luggage. So I'll just wear that for three and a half weeks. So whatever. Then I go through security. Security's actually sweet. It's fine. And then I go into the lounge because I treat myself. Can't lie. It was my Christmas present myself, okay? 28 and great, still fucking single. No one's buying me a Rolex. I'm going to put myself in the lounge. So I've got into the lounge. I'm thinking, I need a drink. I need a drink. So I went and got myself a big fat glass of champagne. I put it in a wine glass as well because I thought let's fucking send it sit down play my switch play my switch i'm just waiting for the notification to say boarding it never came literally wasn't coming so i was like what what is going on here like when am i getting on this fly i'm thinking i'm gonna have boarded by now so i go up to the lady at the desk and i said hello uh what what's going on my flight then she's like yeah delayed two hours i was like well i've only got an hour and 50 minutes to get from my fucking plane to the next plane to get to bali what am i supposed to do she was like, oh, don't worry, Dubai knows you're late. Who fucking told Dubai that I'm late? She literally said, Dubai knows you're late. I was like, right. And like, I'm not very assertive. I don't really like confrontation unless I, you know, fucking need it. She didn't need it. So I was like, right, okay, great. Thanks for your help. Sat back down. I was like, I literally don't know what to do. Let's drink more. So I drank more, drank more. And I was just playing Fortnite on my Switch. And then another hour goes past. And then, no, oh, no, no boarding sign yet. Surely I should be getting on the plane. Um, so go back up. I'm a bit tipsy at this point. Go back to, up to the woman. Like, yeah, so am I making my connecting flight or am I not? Bearing in mind, I've already asked Instagram a while ago, like, how long do I need for a connecting flight? And everyone's like, half an hour, half an hour. You literally go from one plane to the other. Except when you're flying from Heathrow. Someone should have told me that. Anyway, again, she tells me, Dubai knows you're late. I don't, like, it's really not reassuring. I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Um, so I was like, okay, whatever, I've gone back. This girl is seeing me having an absolute meltdown, you know, on the phone to my mom. Like, I don't know what I'm fucking doing. I'm not going to go. I'm going to turn around. She then brings over two more glasses of champagne. Anyways, get on the flight. Got on the flight. I'm now hammered, drunk as a skunk. I don't ever say that, but that's what it was. I'm fucking drunk. And I don't know about anyone else, but when you get on a plane, I know like you can use your phone, but I just, as soon as I enter that aircraft carrier, my phone doesn't work. I can't text anyone I'm taking off now. So I always do it in the lounge. Anyways, as, I've, as I'm getting, boarding my plane, finally, two hours, 20 minutes late, I think it was, that connecting flight, I can fuck off. My friend texts me, no, I get a fucking thing from Airbnb saying my Airbnb's cancelled. I'm flying to my Airbnb now, it's cancelled. Guys, all cancelled. I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm drunk, about to have no signal, like, what am I supposed to do? So I got on the plane and I cried, cried, <laughs> cried, cried, cried. So then, yeah, the hostess came over and she said, what's wrong? And I literally told her my life story. And she's like, oh, when we take off, you can get Wi-Fi. I'll give you a code, like whatever, you can log on. Anyway, so I'm in the air now, up in the air on the way to Dubai, okay? Got Wi-Fi, I've texted my friend like, yeah, hi, babe. I know you're going to be fucking checking in in a few hours, but it's cancelled. So I know your phone doesn't work either, right? And I know it's New Year's Eve. I know you're in Bali. I know it's so busy and there's nowhere to stay, but fucking find us somewhere to stay. Gave her that instruction. She's not even awake at this point. I'm thinking, do you know what's in God's hands? If God will lead you to it, he'll lead you through it. Someone said that. Anyways, 
I'm now like, so much is going wrong. I'm just like, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Land in Dubai. And I'm just thinking like, what what happens now? Because my flight is, is due to take off. Because my phone's got no signal. I don't know what's fucking going on. I go off the plane. Someone's there with a big fat sign saying Bali. I'm like, oh, you're going to walk me to my plane. My plane's waited. No, no, that's not what happened. They sent me to some Connect Emirates desk and they were like, yeah, so you've missed your flight, literally taken off. And I was like, okay, well, that's not my fault. That was nothing to do with me. So where does this leave me? They were like, oh, we're going to put you in a hotel the next flight tomorrow morning. I was like, what did you just say? I'm literally on my own in Dubai. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? And they were like, yeah, you're, you're tomorrow morning. We're going to put you in a hotel. We're going to put you up. I mean, obviously, great. They took care of all of that. But also, you know, I'm already worried about this whole experience. And now I'm stranded in Dubai. So anyway, so I was like, yeah, cool. Like, normally I'm a hypochondriac and I'm really worried. But at this point, I was like, whatever fucking happens, happens. Um, So I get to the hotel I get in the bath do more crying and then I get out of the bath and I'm like fuck it I have no deodorant because obviously that's a liquid that's in my hand luggage and I have no toothpaste because that's liquid that's in my hand luggage I didn't think I'd fucking need it for my day holiday in Dubai um so I'm going around smelling with bad teeth so then I find a concierge and I said look I need deodorant and toothpaste and one thing about Dubai like is it's got to be one of my favorite places so safe everyone who works in Dubai is so lovely so nice he was like wait there like whatever came back with a sack of about 50 deodorants, 50 toothpastes, floss, sewing kits, razors, you name it, I had a sack. I was like, thanks, let me get to work. So I freshen myself up, go sit by the pool, have a little drinky. I've got a few friends, like, I've been to Dubai a couple of times and like a few of my friends actually moved there and lived there. I think they see me on, I didn't think, like, I think my brain was mushed at this point. I didn't think to message anyone saying, hi guys, I'm in Dubai for the day, what should we get up to? But I think I was so worried. And it was my friend said, you're in Dubai, why don't we go for dinner? I was like, um, should I do that? Am I going to miss my flight? And then I was like, look, God, God led me to it. He's going to lead me through it. I'm going to come. So I then put myself in a little cab, 50 minutes away from my hotel on my own. My phone is not working. Turn up at my friend's house. And I'm thinking, because I was there last New Year's, I think. I kind of recognize the building. Um, so I was like, hello, I'm here. And then they were like, oh, we're going to, um, instead of dinner, we're going to go to this like new beach club that's opened. And I was like, yeah, I've got flight in a few. There's like, the days kind of pass. Like, you know, I was just mulling around and feeling sorry for myself. So they're like, oh, we're going to go here. I was like, do you know what? Fuck it, it's what it is. So then they get their mates, pick me up. I don't know who this man is. We go in the car, we're driving around Dubai, turn up at this beach club. In, well, it's not beach club, it's a desert club. It's the middle of fucking nowhere. I mean, like so far out of Dubai, like at least 20 minutes, which is quite far for me. Anyways, get there. And we get on this table, like they're kind of plugged into my, um, and then guess who fucking comes out and performs? <laughs> Rick Rouse the Bows. He was on the stage. They were like, Rick Rouse is coming. I was like, what are you fucking talking about? Well, no, if I tell you the whole story, that was like a shortcut. Turn up at this club. And then my friend's like, oh, let's, let's do a walk around. Let's see what it's saying. We walk around, yeah, in this VIP section over there was Rick Ross and his fucking girlfriend. I can't remember what her name is. But they were sat there and I was like, that's fucking Rick Ross. That is for Rick Ross the boss. And they were like, yeah, he's performing. I was like, are you fucking... By the way, I've got no makeup, no hair stuff, no fake tan. I'm pale as a ghost. My hair is frizzy as fuck. At least I've got clean teeth and children. But I don't have perfume on. Like, I'm out here just smelling like dove. Ew. Um, but anyways, Rick Ross there. Anyways, then he performed. And then I ended up drinking. But I'm right. So the story, model of the story is, I then made it back, back home, got my suitcase, got the flight to Bali, land in Bali. Land in Bali, literally a whole day later. And then we went out for dinner on the night. It was okay, like vibes. I've never been somewhere like Bali. And also it's so hot. I've, like, I don't deal with heat very well. It's really hot and it's really humid. So when you go outside, you're already wet. You're sweat. Like wet. No point doing your hair. Don't wear any makeup. I like, literally just go out and do vibes. So we went out for dinner. And then the next day... <laughs> Next day was New Year's Eve. Um, you know, missed a few of the plans we've already booked. And we were going to this club called Savaya, which I think is like many be the coolest club in the whole world, like really sick. Um, so we met up with some of like people we knew from London. And I don't know why, but I just was having really bad anxiety. So I was like, I'm just gonna get absolutely steaming, which is what I did. I could not tell you what the inside of Savaya looks like. <laughs> I literally have no idea. And I kind of like looked at my Snapchat. And like one thing I said I wouldn't do, but like 
I, like I said, I'm a hypochondriac. One thing I said I wouldn't do is get on the back of a scooter. Why am I with my mate on the back of a scooter at like 1 a.m. on New Year's Eve? I don't know. It was chaos, absolute pure chaos. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> if you want to go to Bali for New Year's Eve, maybe do, I don't know. What I will tell you though is the next day, fuck me. I had barley belly. I've been warned about it. I hadn't been using tap water, I've been using boss water. But maybe I was in the shower, maybe I was eating drinks. Like obviously I was steaming. Oh dear. So I woke up in the morning and like this whole feeling just took over my body. It was like cold chills, but like coming from my bowels and it was just radiating through my body. Oh my God, I cannot tell you the pain. Like it wasn't as bad as when I went to South Africa. Those of you that know, know what happened to me in South Africa. But like, I, was, I work up, it's so hot in this country. It's so hot. Even with aircon, like, you're just another different level of temperature. I'm just sat on the toilet. Like, I've got to the toilet, woken up in fear. I've got to the toilet and it's just like coming out of every fucking hole possible. Like, shitting myself. I'm throwing up. Snot is pouring out my nose. I'm pretty sure I'm getting more earwax than normal. Like, there was just so much going on for 14 hours straight. I literally didn't leave the bathroom. Did not leave. It was like, I couldn't even have water. So there was that. But then I got, we moved villas. So the next day I stayed in. Everyone else like, went out for dinner. And then the day after, everyone went to the water park and I stayed in my villa. But when we went to the new villa, I got an IV drip. And it sorted me out. So going to Bali, like someone said, take charcoal tablets. But like I had them in my case. This is how ill I was. I could not get from the toilet to the suitcase. And I knew that I had medicine in there. And I was just thinking, oh, what am I supposed to do? My friends had like, gone out so I was just kind of on my own on the toilet it was just good I counted like how many towels there were it was just hell anyways I did that we went to Finn's Beach Club but like I think I was just so unwell for the whole trip I couldn't really take Bali in so there was that that was literally my whole trip of being ill and then like and then I went to Finn's Beach Club I will actually argue that ocean is better in Ibiza I know Finn's is bigger but Ocean is like, Ocean's just got my heart and soul. I'll probably get married there. But Finns is like, it's fucking cool. And like, this, it's huge, it's fucking huge. And also what I'll say about Bali is like, I've never been somewhere so cheap ever in my whole life. Like you would get on the back of a scooter and they would drive you. You know, we stayed in Jimboran and then we moved to Kangoo. But like you could get, you know, I got a taxi from... The airport to Kangoo, which is like, because the traffic out there is absolutely mental. I think it's like seven kilometers or maybe seven miles, but it took us four hours. It cost me 10 pounds. Yeah. And like a table was like 100 pounds. But yeah. When I was looking to go to Bali though, don't ask me. Oh no, i tell you where I did go. It was really nice. Lima Bay. I think it's new. Um, Good vibes, good food. Like they do drinks and stuff. But at this point I wasn't touching anything that wasn't like, you know, full fat Coke and toast. So yeah. That was Bali. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in a rush to go back. But yeah, we've done it now. I'm really pleased about that one. So expensive. Um, oh, and then also, I booked the wrong flight home. I booked the wrong flight to go and meet Millie. So um, I was meant to fly on the 5th. But like, obviously, Millie was flying from England. So she left on the 4th because she was flying to, you know, 24 hours and time difference. She landed on the 6th. So I was like, shit. So I was flying from Bali on the 5th to land on the 6th an hour after her because I'd seen the 4th. I was like, shit, I need to fly on the 4th as well. I don't know why I did that. But so when I, I woke up the next day from Finns, I then had to get a flight. So I did a day in Sydney on my own, but it's just the best place in the world. So yeah, that was Bali <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> um, but yeah, now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. We're going to play Say It or Shot It. I feel like when I do solo apps, it's really fun for me to drink and embarrass myself. So that's what we're going to do. I kind of put it on Snapchat, put it on Instagram for you all to send it in. Um, <laughs> I can see all the guys. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, fine, right. You want to play Say or Shot It? Obviously with Tequila Rose. Um, good job I'm not doing anything after this. Hey, right. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It feels like an old Chloe YouTube. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're doing sales shot it, okay? Question number one. Do you want to read them out? I read them. Yeah, I think that's good. 
Question number one. And this was your most asked question. Oh, let me guess what it is. (laughs) Is there any chance that you will be going on Love Island All Stars? I think I'm going to shot that one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm going to sip that. That's like a mug of tequila rice. I'm going to sip it. Anything to say? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I love All Star. I mean, I've, I'm catching up on TikTok. I need to watch it properly, but do I? I actually really enjoyed the bit with Anton uh, called out Mitch. Oh, my God. Anton, you big fat slay. I want you to come on the fucking pod. I am now a fan of Anton. I was before when he cried at Craig David, iconic. <laughs> but you saying that to Mitch, snaps for clicks, Anton. Snaps for clicks. I don't even know if that's what Al says. I was... Um, slay the day away forever. And I will also say, Tom Clare, you're a nightmare. <laughs> He's my friend too, I don't care. Like, slay. <laughs> He's making good TV, but like these poor girls. I know poor Lib. Lib? Oh, yeah? yeah? But why did none of the girls in there tell her? Like, guys, say guys, hey, Mitch is not the one for you or anyone. Maybe at this point. I think that's what was so iconic about your series as well, is like when she sat you girls down and was like, <laughs> oh, he said he loves me. And you were literally like, I'm going to walk away. I know, but the amount of times I'd like, me and Lib would have chats and I would kind of highlight to her, you know, a few, you know, red flags I'd maybe seen. Jake won't care about me saying this because I do love Jake. And he's a DJ now. His single's coming out soon. Not heard it, but... Send loads of clips of him doing this on TikTok. <laughs> Send it, Cornish. Um, I don't, yeah, bless her. But what I will say, like, no lib slander will be tolerated because she's just, she's just a lover girl, you know? And some people are lover girls. Bless her. Stay away from Mitch. Right, next question. Next question. If you were in the villa... Who would you couple up? I think I know the answer to this, but who would you couple up with? Josh Ritchie. <laughs> He's fucking fit and funny. Josh Ritchie or um, Callum. He's fit, but I, I don't know whether he's like too nice for me, but Josh Ritchie would be fun. He seems I, good vibes. I don't know if Callum's got the chat for you. He's a nice boy. He seems he's, pleasant, you know. Yeah, but I don't know that he's got like... Like Josh Ritchie's got chat. No. Josh Ritchie's got chat. So if Love Island doesn't go very well. Hello, Joshy. <laughs> Come on the pod. <laughs> Come on the pod. P.S. <laughs> no, don't put that in. <laughs> Question number three. And this got asked quite a few times. You know? Did it? Yeah. What happened after Celebs Go Dating with Connor? <laughs> um... Nothing. Connor lives in Scotland and like we're just, we're just very different. I think the whole, me and Connor are really good friends. I literally texted him yesterday. He's sound as fuck, like cool, like, and he's really, I've, I would like to say about him, he like, always checks on me, which I really appreciate. Um, But we, we just, you know, didn't really have legs. But yeah, we're still friends. Um, That, you know, the last episode is literally the last time I saw him and kind of, yeah, shout him out. River in Glasgow, hit him up. Nothing, literally nothing happened. Isn't yeah. he friends with Olivia from Big Brother? He is. He knows Olivia from Big Brother. That's how I fucking got her on because I text him like, make sure she comes on. Um, so yeah, he's friends with her. That's it, really. Shout out, Connor. He should go on Love Island. He'd be really good. He'd be really good. He's got fucking chat, mate. Yeah, he'd be good. Yeah. Uh, what is your current relationship status? Mm, guys, I'm fucking so single. <laughs> but by choice. No, not by choice. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah, no, I'm really single. But I am I don't want to talk to anyone. Normally I lie. Like, I'm actually not lying. Normally I'm like happy to entertain it. But I think... Um, I'm just going on a boy band. Unless anyone wants to take me on a really nice day, then I'll do it. But I just think I did like I'm really worried about dating someone and I have and I'm also a bit mental. I'm scared about doing it. And when I'm kind of dating someone, I think I like fuck it up before it goes anywhere. Maybe I've got commitment issues. I think I do. Oh, I really think I do. Cause I, every time it's going really well, I'll fucking sabotage the living shit out of it. And I'll leave the country. I'll have a go at you. I'll bring up something that happened a month ago. Oh, 
Maybe we should go back to therapy. I'm not not fucking doing it. But yeah, no, I'm very single by choice. I'm having a lovely time. Good. Yeah, it's nice. Um, did you get with anyone in Australia? You have a shot. <laughs> I'm gonna shot that one and leave it to your imagination. <laughs> I don't know. What I will say though, I'm a bit tipsy now, I would never normally say this, but English boys are way fucking fitter than Australia boys. If you go out in Australia, like, they're not bad. I'm not saying they're ugly. They're not ugly. But, like, I feel like England produces, like, stunning-looking boys. Is it? There's not... There's... Yeah, like, I don't know how to explain it. You know, um, say if you went for a dinner up London, the odds on you saying, seeing five fit boys that night is quite high. In Australia, no. You know? Lots of mullets. I like mullets, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> Someone say too much. But yeah, a lot of mullets there. Do you think they're not fit or do you think they're not your type? Well, no, like I had this conversation with loads of people out there. And people told me before I went, they were like, there's just a lack of, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's Bondi, maybe it's days of, maybe the date time that I was going out. Maybe it was that, but, you know. There was one person, we went out for dinner, and he did take my breath away. I was like, fuck me. He, but he was like carved by the gods beautiful. He knew it. But like I saw him and I was like, fuck me, that, that is a model. Um, we didn't chat. I don't even think he looked in my direction. <laughs> that was cool. Cool, good, good vibes in Australia, that one. But yeah, apart from that, I feel like in London, you, you can look around and be like, wow, wow. Never done that in my life. All right, next one. Okay, this question I've been asked a lot in the comments at the moment. Okay. Yeah, get that ready. Um, Are you dating George Clark? <laughs> Am I? I just said I was single. <laughs> hey, lol. <laughs> I don't know. Am I? Could I be? Find out next week on Glow as World. Uh, question, I don't know what number one. Um, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? A wag. It's in my really? yearbook. A wife and girlfriend of a footballer. It's literally my yearbook. <laughs> I would like look at Cheryl Cole and Victoria Beckham and think, wow, you're so fucking cool. I still think that. Um, I don't know if I date a footballer now because all I hear is horror stories, but I wanted to be a wag. There you go. Thank you. Maybe you should reply to some of those footballers in your DM. No, like I literally, I have been with an athlete, yeah, and like all they do is train and then fucking message girls, like get fucked. And then really, well, I'm really generalizing. I've been one, but I've heard stories and they just like, because they train all the time and stuff. Like I couldn't relate a lot. You know, I'm not in the gym. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, you know? Yeah. So there's that. This was uh, years ago, by the way. I wasn't no you would never know who it was. <laughs> Fucking years ago. Uh what's the best thing and the worst thing about living with Millie? Everything about living with Mills is but like imagine living with your absolute best friend in the whole world. Like all we fucking do is laugh our heads off. But also what I say, I think I've said this before, like Millie is the most like caring person. Like she's really I would say maternal, like she really does look after me. Like she's so sweet. In fact, on the way to the pod, she's like Babes, this is what we're having for dinner. Like, she told me what I'm having for dinner. Thank like, you. Yeah. Um, the worst bit is when she goes to Wales and leaves me on my own, fucking selfish bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I will say. Oh my God, this art. Oh, TikTok is like a Wales appreciation site. Yeah, we love Wales. We need to go to Wales, man. Mm. Coming soon. Who is texting me? Oh. No one interesting. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Uh, this question you might want to get a shot for. Okay. Uh, who's the worst person you've ever dated? Well, all of them, obviously. I didn't fucking get anywhere. I'll shot, but he fucking knows. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking knows. <laughs> I mean, nobody watches this. So that's for you, you prick. Anyways. Oh yeah, 
okay, like, I really, I think about this a lot. Okay, so, basically, my mate, like, basically half my mates are single and half of them are in really committed, like, long-term relationships. And I realised that there's only stuff that you would ever do if you're really, really in love. For example, fart in front of a boy. I've never done that. And I wouldn't do it. Unless I really thought you were going to marry me and be with me till the day I died. I just haven't farted. I think maybe I've one time, oh, I'm in hell. Do you know, like, if you're like, ah, you know? <laughs> you know, like, say if you just eat or you've got a bad belly and you laugh so much, you fart. I think that's happened to me once. And, like, I was traumatized, you know. I wish we could make farts, like, more, like, fun and cute. <laughs> there's just so much shame around a fart like the noise is weird fucking smells most of the time you know if it's all oh, like if you let out actually my friend years ago I don't know if I, maybe bleep her name I don't know if she wanted to name it but she told me she was like if you ever need to fart in front of a boy what you need to do is spread your ass cheeks so there's no noise I have a question yeah. Um, what do you think, would you rather do a really loud fart that didn't smell or a really smelly fart that didn't make any noise? Oh, no noise. No noise. <laughs> I just blame it on something else or blame it on them. I'd gaslight you to make you think you've just fucking fired. I will actually say, this is disgusting, but we were really hung over in Australia, me and Mill. And like, I don't even really fart around Millie. I've probably done it like four times. I don't know. Like, it's just not in my thing. To like let one rip, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> we were really hungover and I was like in and out of sleep, like I just felt awful. And I woke up because she was telling me off because I'd fired. And I was like, oh my God. And I keep thinking about it every day and getting embarrassed. <laughs> I've not even discussed it with her. We've just kind of left it, you know, swept it under the rug. But if I'm feeling shame around someone who I fucking live with who literally knows every single thing about me, how am I ever going to do that in front of a boy? <laughs> like, I know people who like shit with the door open. I'm not doing that. So that's bad. Wouldn't do that. What are other things? Like being sick. Took a warning if you've got emetophobia. But being sick, like I don't fucking care. I'll throw up to, you know, the cows come home and I'll burp. I don't care about burping. What is my stigma around a fart? Is there anything else that you shouldn't do? Like would you announce that you needed a poo? Or no. that you're on your period? Oh, period, yeah. I can't do anything about my period. <laughs> You can't, can't do, do anything, anything about, about me. I know. What is that? Do you know what though? Like I, I think I'm really immature when it comes to like stuff like this. But I like if I'm on my period, I'm like, oh, I'm on, and I'm assuming that they know what that means. And if they're like, what? Then I'll block you. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me fucking tell you I'm on my fucking period. I'm going through hell, and there's blood coming out. I've done. Like, don't make me do that. Um, I think if you have to explain that, they're just probably too young for you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Cut that? No, that's fine, but Lord knows I will never go with someone younger than me again. Lord knows. Um, yeah, but here it's fine. Six Yeah, like if you really have the shits. Like, is it actually yeah, because <laughs> this actually plagues my mind more than it probably should. But say so where I live in my house with Millie, I have my bedroom and I have an ensuite, but the ensuite is really close to the bed. Then the next bathroom is Millie's bedroom, but it's literally just across the hall from me. So if I'm shitting my brains out, you can fucking hear it from my room. Then the next bathroom is at the bottom of the stairs. The stairs are outside my room. So all toilets are in the vicinity of my bowels. So I was thinking, like, what can I actually do if, you know, if it gets to the stage where I've got a boy around and I really need to shit my pants? I don't know what you do. What you do is you hold it in until you go blue in the face and go to the gym and shit at the gym. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And also, like, dude, there's so many awkward things when you first start getting with someone. Like, the whole toilet thing is a big play. Another thing is, like, like if they go for a shit in your house, that's just... <laughs> like, if... I don't know. People will probably wake up in the morning and need, why are we talking about poo so much? Probably need to go to the toilet, right? Which is fine. I don't fucking care. But like, I would rather be told as opposed to walking upstairs and like smelling it in my bathroom and the windows open. Like, can you tell me you're going for a poo so I avoid it? Because otherwise I'm like walking in the smell of your shit. Like, just can you say it? 
Okay, the next thing, which is really annoying, is when you first start seeing someone and, you know, you're not going out for dinner, you're going to get a takeaway and no one wants to be assertive. I hate it. What do you want? What do you want? In my head, I'm thinking, I fucking want a Nando's, but I can't say that in case you don't want it and then you get annoyed and, like, you think I'm, you know, being greedy. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Like, when you first start seeing someone, it's just, like, annoying. I saw this thing on TikTok earlier that was like the best way to get out of somebody what they want to eat is to be like, oh, I've got a surprise for you tonight. Like, I'm going to surprise you with a takeaway. Can you guess what it is? And then the first thing they guess, Ooh. you're like, yeah, it's that. And then you get asked, good, I like that. Like that, like that. I would like that. But then if I'm on a diet and I say like big fat Chinese takeaway and you get me, I'm like, in the next morning, number one, I'm going to need to go for a shit in the garden. <laughs> And then number two, I'm going to be annoyed because I've now gained weight. So <laughs> there's all of that going on. Right. And to round up my first solo app of the year, I thought we would do Chloe versus the comments because, yeah, they don't fucking go unnoticed when you comment something really horrible. You know, thanks a lot, Rachel. You brought my iPad and you pissed me off for the whole day. Right, first one. Why does she talk like that? Genuinely, like, before I went on Love Island, yeah, I didn't think there was a problem with the way that I spoke. You all talk about it all the time. Like, I don't fucking care. Whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. Like, you know, I've got ADHD, so I mimic accents a lot. I lived in East London, lived in South London, but then also, you know, from Bista. That's why I talk like that. And also, when I'm drunk, I slur my words a bit, probably slurring them on this pod. When I'm tired, I can't be asked to talk. Like, there's a lot that goes into that. So why do I talk like that? There's your answer. Also, if you're going to comment that, please also attach a voice note of you speaking so we can compare. You know, if you're going to dig me out, let me dig you back out. Right, next one. Who is this about? Both people in this video are huge red flags. I think it's you and Millie. Me and Millie. Um, yeah. We would be a red flag if we were, you know, trying to chat to you. I'm sh I don't even know who you are. And also, I've never ever in my life once said, I'm a walking green flag. I'm a good example. I'm really, you know, I've never done that. And I'm very open and honest, you know. So, yeah, red flag for you, maybe. I'm going to live a sad little boring life, Jane. <laughs> Next one, immature as hell. Realistically, lockdown took two years off me. <laughs> so technically, I'm 26. Yeah. Also, like, I'm really fun. <laughs> I don't really fucking. I don't. And also, I don't want to be mature. And like, why? Why would I need to do that? Why would I ever need to do that? I don't need to do that. So fuck you, bitch. Next one. <laughs> yeah, but also, sorry, there is an irony in somebody going to your video on your channel yeah, and to comment in. that you're immature. Yeah, you we're actually weirdo. Say it's my face. I honestly I don't get it like commenting nasty things on people's things. Like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, if I've annoyed you, if I've met you, you know, comment. But also all you're doing, yeah, if you don't like me and you're watching my stuff and then you're commenting, you're doing me a favor. If you really don't like me, don't comment. But then we can't do this again, so go for it. She's like 30, talking like she's in high school. <laughs> I, well, right, one thing about me is I'm lazy, yeah, I'm fucking lazy. Talking like I'm in high school. I mean, realistically, a few years ago, I was really smart. I got first class degree, bitch, from a Russell Group Uni. Wow, and I had a really good job. And now all I do is play Fortnite with 12-year-olds who obviously my vocab is not up to scratch. And also, I don't fucking care about that one. <laughs> it's like, it's annoying. Like, okay, yeah, she's like 30. I'm 28, bitch, 30 next year. Talking like I'm in high school. I didn't realise there was some sort of standard to talking online. And if there is, I still don't care. I'm going to carry on. So, yeah. I mean, also... Don't listen to my podcast then. <laughs> oh yeah, again. For you to make this opinion, you've listened to me. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> the last 
The last two brain cells having a conversation. Slay. Because <laughs> you already know we were enjoying that conversation. It was a nice time. We both got a lot out of it. Also, can you do a brain scan and show me how many brain cells you've got? Because you've listened and engaged and understood what we're talking about. So there's that. Have you got a fucking degree from Oxford? Have you got a PhD? If not, <laughs> just put my, I gave you the bird if you're listening. <laughs> Next one, mind numbing content. It's not for everyone. I never said it was. <laughs> It's not for everyone. We've got a niche target audience, yeah? You know? Who is this podcast for? This podcast is for the girls and the gays only. Okay? And I bet, how much money do you want to bet? I bet £100. Whoever commented this has got some random footballer as their DP. <laughs> I bet £100. I bet £1,000. Fucking bet. Okay. She is the worst host ever. I was disappointed. Thank you for your constructive feedback. Um, I don't know if you noticed, we've stopped doing weekly guests. Um, and I'm actually sat on my own today. So I hope I've done you proud. Following on the note from me being the worst host in the world, who would you guys like to see me host on here, have a chat with, play some games? Very different to the old setup, you know. It's just cash at home, bang this on and subscribe. Who would you like to see on here? We can have someone we've had before. Someone we've never had. Someone so fucking famous, it'll break the internet. Kim Kardashian, I know you want to come on here. I'm just trying to make time for you. <laughs> but yeah, let me know in the comments. Those were your comments. If I get an influx of rude comments now, Lord knows I'm replying to you all. I'm, if you're posting a rude comment, yeah, post it with a profile picture and a voice note, just so we're on a level, <laughs> level playing field. First, at back, new year, new me, same pod say me do not forget to like comment please subscribe we're trying to get to 100k and i will see you all next week love you